Hi, good evening, everyone. I think we we'll proceed to start. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining this call. Thank you for joining this uh, sharing. Tell me your full screen. So within this seminar itself, uh, this sharing, We'll have two very important topics, a, I'll say, which summarizes to just one single idea. is our protection against lightning protection. Let me just go into this for a while. Um, in lightning protection, there is this IEC standards that we need to actually observe. Let me see what I'm already right. Yes, okay. Now let me make a full screen. So internationally, we have uh, IEC 62305. And then for Singapore, we are using SS25, which we have adopted, uh, I'll say very much wholly from IEC 62305. So let's continue. So IEC structure, IEC 62305 and SS25, we are very much like having four parts. So four parts, part one, two, three, four. And part one is the definition. Part two will be the risk assessment. So after much calculation to the risk level, we will then know whether a building or installation is at risk. And part three will be the design rules in terms of like air conductor, lightning protection, priority cage, on the protection of the building externally. And part four will be the search priority devices, so commonly known as SPD. So for Singapore wise, Singapore Lightning Protection Solution Team, we have two support team, two support personnel, uh, myself, product specialist, and four technical promotion specialists. You may take down our numbers and then uh, or even email to us if you have any doubts after the sharing. In the very next session, Paul will help to share on the part two and part three in terms of like uh, to, to run up lightning protection. But today we're going to cover part one, the definition, and then the part four, which is very much useful for a lot of user nowadays. So some background, lightning protection in the past for Singapore, we rely on CP33. So in the past, there's very little knowledge on how to protect against lightning. So the guidance were isolation, or even like say, uh, ensure, ensuring that flammable items are not stored near or outside, that is exposed or having a chance to be uh, struck by lightning, or even like say, stored in wooden huts. So all these are uh, very fundamental guidelines. Unfortunately, CP33 has uh, gone outdated and then we need to move on to the newer standard. So IEC 62305 and SS25. So Singapore wise, yes, we adopted 62305, 62305, okay, and part four to part, part one to part four. But then we have some modification to NX A and NX B. Okay, so this is how the structure looks like. Part one, part two, part one, part two. And part three will be the external protection. So this is where you get to see some of the buildings having air terminal or lightning rod on top of the building, as well as some copper tapes running from the top of the building all the way to the bottom, and then going into the ground or the lightning earth itself. Then part four will be very much search protection and internal. And why are we focusing on this part four is because nowadays we do have a lot more electronics getting micro miniature. Like recently we are talking about the fine nano technology. And this fine nano itself is more susceptible to any electronic, any search wave itself. 
Okay, moving in next. So, but the standard itself, the standard itself will have a lot of normal pressure, especially like there's no devices that we can change our weather. So it is due to the earth itself, the earth climate, that's why we have such a weather phenomenon and lightning occurs. So lightning density for different countries varies. So in Singapore, we have a high lightning density, but not high strength. So which is why sometimes you do hear complaints from your friends, like, oh, I, my, my TV got burned up, my coffee maker got burned up, things like that. But then you don't hear justice uh, or let's say fatality of it because we have basic protection. And the basic protection, uh, I'll say, good enough to, to prevent any disastrous effect doesn't mean it protects against our electronic devices. So this data itself, yes, it says that cover all insulation, but there are exclusion, railway, vehicle, ships, vessels, aircraft, offshore insulation, underground piping, and even telecoms, these are uh, excluded. Exclude doesn't mean it doesn't need protection, but when we have this exclusion, it means we need to increase or review its protection separately. So maybe we could actually share on vehicles or even like say ships, aircraft later on in, uh, for interested to topic. Now moving on, some other part that we need to observe. Lightning, lightning itself, doesn't always strike the tallest building. So this picture is not a, a PS, not Photoshop. This is a real picture. I think nowadays with our smartphone that is quick enough in terms of like capturing all these slow motion videos, we could actually capture such critical images to see where the lightning goes to. Yes, not only strike small structure, but it also strike even roads. So let's look into another part. Oh, I'd like to share that uh, in Singapore, right? In Singapore, or let's say we talk about lightning, Singapore is rather flat. Uh, the tallest is the tallest peak, I'll say uh, 290 meter for a building. And then a natural structure, a natural uh, 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 geological, uh, physical uh, item will be our hill, Bukitima Hill. I think standing tall at 163.63 above sea level. So that's not quite tall. So uh, I could claim that Singapore is rather flat. So when we talk about flat, right, we do not have other effects like our flashes or across the clouds flashes. So what do I mean? Let's look into the video next. Okay. But let's look into this video. Let me know if you can hear it. This video, Ah, you may not be able to hear it, right? Yeah. Yes, it is captured on a camera and it's striking the point that is not the tallest building. This is somewhere in Bishan Park, Bishan area. So lightning not necessarily strike the tallest, but it may strike somewhere where uh, a building or even a structure that is attracting lightning. So some say that this is there's some there's a swimming pool over here. That's why it's struck here. Okay, now I'm going to introduce uh, downward flashes and upward flashes. Okay, why are we talking about all this? Because these are all the guidance required within the code. Because uh, just happened that Singapore is lucky that we do not have clouds looming below a tall skyscraper, but that doesn't mean in other countries there isn't. So for instance, in Genting Highland, Malaysia, we do find clouds looming beneath certain, certain level. And that's where, where lightning will strike upwards. Let's look into the strike upwards. Okay, striking down, striking down. This is the downward flashes. Okay, you're gonna see uh, upward flashes soon. Yes, and you're gonna see uh, across, across the cloud. Yes. This video is taken in America, so Singapore doesn't have quite such 
climate yet. For us, most of the time it's actually downward strike. But then it seems that we are getting more and more downward strikes, which I will share in the lightning density is on. So you look at some of the lightning, it comes smooth, it comes very fast. Some are slightly slower. So these are what we call the, um, I'll say, uh, very fast flashes and long flashes. So we're going to see this duration later on. Okay, looking at this table, right? These tables are all the meteorological data itself. So you'll be wondering what are we looking at? So later on, I'll share with you. Let's say for the first, very first few row, okay, let's say on the K itself, lightning, when it strikes Earth, uh, we can categorize it like a current, electric current. So that's why this is a free current. Uh, the only thing that we have to pay for is the electricity bill at home. So this is in terms of K, which is rather high. And for the values, fixed value, we have 50 all the way to 200. So take note of this 200. This 200 will be a reference point for a lot of calculation later on. But then today, we were not going to do too much calculation. Not that's not the tough one. But look into the first row itself. You might be wondering what is a 4, 4K and 98% and a 20K, 80% and a 90, a 90. Okay, but it's a negative short, very short wave. So what are we talking about the short wave and the long wave or the negative flashes and the positive flashes? I'll say that in the standard itself, guidance is when we are not able to measure lightning flashes, we will take an 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time will be negative flashes and then 20% of the time will be like positive flashes. So certain countries could take like 90-10. Okay, if they are able to measure. Okay, negative flashes are rather short. Negative flashes are rather short. So we will get lesser of the damage, but positive flashes will be a lot of positive energy and then it could cause greater, greater damage. But unfortunately, I'll say fortunately, in, within this standard, we will not be able to protect against positive flashes. We will just cover only negative. So whatever that we're going to continue later on, um, even though later on we will not mention the negative shot, but it's all about negative flashes from the clouds onto the earth and to any structure. Now let's go into this line 1A and 1B. I just want to do a quick reference to what some of the uh, meteorological data that is collected. Interesting one, because if you are going to another country and do design, then you need to really cover the meteorological data because Singapore is only collecting within ourselves. And in fact, Singapore, when we first look into the lightning production, we have to borrow data from Malaysia side because Singapore doesn't have enough data on our lightning. We didn't have rainfall. Unfortunately, we didn't have about lightning. But Malaysia will actually uh, took a lot of data and then we actually borrow from them. Now let's look into this. So this is the diagram in which there's a, a graph 1A and 1B, just using one graph. Oh, oh, I'm not sure you say it. I don't think you look at it. Okay. okay, correspond to property of 98. So it, what it, it means that 90 98% of the time of all these flashes are about 4K. About 4K. So it's, it's quite simple to understand that. And then if let's say we talk about 10K, Maybe there's a 80% chance of it occurring also. Ah, so this is what you call the probability table uh, that uh, how often it occurs. So if we look into 4K corresponds to a probability of 98%, then we, we can safely say that most of the time our lightning is like between 3 to 5K, most of the time, with sometimes very harsh. So I have friends who, who uh, travel from other countries and when they visit Singapore, they, they were shocked that our thunderstorm and the lightning is so loud. They were very shocked. Yeah, like, it felt like end of the world. So this table is found within the standards. But um, I think for us and in terms of like design, this is very much less of a concern because most of the time we reference to the standards and then we do not need to really collect climate data ourselves. Winning. Now, why would that be good? Yes, you can. Singapore, this is the one very interesting part. Singapore, as a as a coloric level, we have our oh, Thunder Day 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 166.5. 
wow, that's a lot. Quite a uh, um, I'll say half the time we have a thunderstorm. Okay, half the, or lightning itself. Interesting. And the raining season. So this rainy season is very uh, useful because we get to see two major peaks, April, May, and November, December, because these are the, the more uh, thunderstorm day and then you get to see more, more lightning. And that's where a lot more equipment uh, get damaged during then. So I heard of like security system get zapped, I heard of TV get blown up, or, I mean electronics get blown up, doesn't, not, not able to turn on. I've heard about server and I heard about like uh, even Car park gantry also getting hit. Well, let's continue. The southwest monsoon and northeast monsoon. So why are we talking about all this? Is still the same fact that if a country doesn't have all these climate changes and every day is a dry season, dry season without any thunder, then there is a need for protection. But Singapore will be yes, we have it. So that's why the need for protection. Now what changes now? In fact. Every year, right, uh, nowadays we have uh, NEA uh, to help us collect data. And then in the past, we have 166, but now we have 168. You can see that Singapore is getting more and more rains and thunderstorm. I, I kind of like the, the idea that we are getting more rain now. And the monsoon period is still the same, haven't changed much. But interesting is that thunderstorm tend to occur in the afternoon. I think when the hot air rises, uh, meeting up with the clouds itself, we do get a more chance of zero heating and rainfall. So in the past and now, very much similar, very much similar. But sometimes, sometimes we do get dry, dry uh, spell. So it can be in the table form, in terms of thunder day, lightning days. So. I recall, later I'll recall, uh, show this map. Yes, I like this, we show this map. This is a lightning flash density. How do we read it? Let's look into the bluish color. Bluish color happened to be in the eastern part of Singapore. It is having five to 10 flashes per square kilometer per year. So in a year, there could be like 10 flashes, 10 lightning flashes within that kilometer itself. So, but it doesn't mean that this is like a density only, that means over the year collected. But it doesn't mean that, let's say, day one to day 10, every day we have one flashes, and then 11 day, there will be any flashes. So we're still gonna see more and more. But apparently on, on this map, it's quite interesting that Eastern part of Singapore has lesser flashes, and the Western part has more flashes, especially the reddish portion. And the reddish portion is where Bukit Timah resides. So it's not so difficult to guess why so. And also we have this um, telecom tower, signal tower over here. That's why uh, perhaps this telecom equipment has attracted more lightning, or it's because it is uh, on the hilltop. Let's move on. So why is this density important? Because this density will allow us to calculate, to put into calculation in the risk assessment for part two, and we'll calculate whether the building, the installation, has higher risk to, to lightning and the surges or lesser. So in this case, I can claim that um, airport is rather clear. So with or without, we are not so worried about getting equipment hit, but then we still have to do some basic protection. So let me put into the map. Aha, so lightning flash and I can map out. So let's say for properties in Orchard Road, I'll say it's only like 15, but Bukit Bato area, I'll get like 30. And Jurong West area, I'll get 25, which is the reason, okay. Okay, now let's go into this next one. So hey, no matter what, we are still engineering uh, uh, design, doing engineering design. So we do need a reference. So the reference will be, in fact, say we talk about the first return stroke, ah, first lightning flashes. If first lightning flashes, there's a chance that a lot of energy is being striked. So according to this table itself, which is also part of the global data itself, 99.99% of the lightning current are lower than 200 kV. 99.99%. So in engineering, if we can protect against 99.99% of the chances, then we are considered a complete test, a complete protection. So which is corresponding to 200 k. So these 200 k become a golden reference for a lot of design. A lot of design in the sense that if you want to increase 
the production level, we will consider more than 200K. If we want to reduce it, we will be reduced, will be lower than 200K. So these 200K will become the golden references in lightning protection. So this is the categorization. No matter what, we need to categorize lightning itself. So short stroke, when the lightning first strike, these are the characteristics of the profile, as the rise time will be 10 microseconds, and the time to decay to 50% will be 350 for direct lightning strike. But the indirect waveform will be 8 oblique 20. 8 oblique 20. Nice. 8 oblique 20. So 8 oblique 20 will be a narrower pulse. So let's look at it. So if the pulse is long, so we call it long stroke, it's going to emit a lot of energy. Ah, uh, that's why it's very dangerous. But uh, if it's going to emit such a long stroke, high chance there will be a lot of damage and there isn't much we can protect against. So we can actually skip this part whereby how to protect against long. Or I'll say most building installation, we will need to consider a long stroke. We'll consider the short stroke and the energy in the short stroke. Okay, so within this part one definition, there are like eight major parts in definition. We have come like cover quite a few already. Now we're left with another three parts. So damage to the building, damage to the structure and the effect of lightning. So if our building is concrete, reinforced steel frame, ah, then the lightning strike itself and the damage will be entirely different. So let's say for Burr Khalifa, it's entirely made of steel with glass itself. The building itself, the building itself structurally, is, is able to conduct lightning energy down to the earth. Ah, that's why the is able to dissipate lightning energy. So that's why it's rather safe. But does it mean if you open the window, you won't get strike? There's still a chance, there's still a risk for you to get strike. We will come to that part. So function, when we talk about the effect of lightning on structure, we need to look into the function. Okay, you may be looking at factory, schools, farm, hotel, offices. So um, especially hospital, hospital where you have a lot of patients seeking medical treatment, that's where a lot of people may get panicked when there's a fire or let's say lightning struck, struck the hospital and there's a fire. A lot of people will be panicking. So that's why if the function is a hospital healthcare, there's a need to do more protection. More protection sometimes is not necessary, not only uh, limited to just lightning protection, but also fire drill. We need to do fire drill, which is why Singapore-wise, we are relatively orderly wherever we do fire drill. Less panicky. Okay, occupants, or even like say compostable material. So you have compostable material. We have to ensure that it's entirely protected, not only from the fire, but also from lightning as well. Back at services and skill in Asia. So let's say, if we look into a resort that is off coast or near the coast, um, where the density is actually low, the danger and the risk of getting strike is low. Even if there's a fire, um, the, the, the population density is low, there's a lower chance of getting hurt. But that doesn't mean we don't protect, it's just that we could spend lesser on the protection. So this is the guide. Because a lot of time right, when we do about protection, sometimes we actually forgot what should we protect. Okay. So that's why IEC standards and SS55 will give a guidelines. So we have buildings, farm, theater, school, banks, insurance. So every of them will have their own value. When I say value is like, let's say if I have a wooden house, a shed, a training shed, or just a shed, wooden shed. Yes, what is the cost of wooden shed? very low. So do I need to spend a lot on the protection? No, not necessary. But if the building contain important items like museum buildings, yes, then I would need to really protect the building or the installation. So sometimes like OG box that doesn't have electronics, we can just simply say that no, no need for, for any protection. Okay, so next definition, where the lightning strike is will be the source itself. If the lightning strike on top of the building, directly on the structure, as one, a direct strike, flashes to the structure, which means that strike the building, the build, whatever that is within the building will have direct effect of the lightning. Then the lightning could strike somewhere else, nearby or not so near. When they say near to the structure, it means 
less than one kilometer. If it's far away, it will be more than one kilometer. So in Singapore, I think most of the buildings are quite near each other. If you see your neighboring building got struck, high chance that you will you will, you will feel not say we will feel, but more like the electric will get to feel the effect. Ah, from this happened. And then S3 will be a direct strike to the services. So Singapore has a lot more buried underground cable. So S3 hardly occurs for Singapore, but it occurs uh, in a lot of countries. S4, the source, it hits on the ground, the earth itself, and then create electron, electronic coupling, electromagnetic coupling, and the search wave will travel through the electrical services into the building. So this is the part that we also need to concern. So a lot of time we look at the, no, the lightning did not strike my building, but why is it that my electronic equipment still fail? This is the reason. It strikes somewhere else and then electrocoupling, electromagnetic coupling, and then travel into the building. So where should we block the search wave? Ah, services for, at the services service point for the search resta. So what are the damages? So these are still the damages and then uh, definition. So to link up to the part two. So D1, D2, D3 are the damages. But look into them. D1, injury to life being, is a no, no, strictly no. So which is why we're talking about lightning protection for structure, for building, including bus stop, bus stop, training shed, temporary pavilion. These are necessary. Physical damage, lightning, current, and sparks. Will there be any sparks that are going to flash over and hit someone? And then D3 will be the failure into the system. So it will be like equipment failure. But this part, we, won't, we shall be worried about it. Uh, this part should be covered in part four. Okay. Part one itself is very much on end terminal. So this is the very first step to protecting a building. Okay. Loss of human life is a no no. Loss of service is still okay. Loss of current uh, cultural heritage for Singapore wise, um, I, I can't really think of anything that is of very important cultural heritage besides Osley Road. <laughs> okay. And loss of economic value, it could be that um, uh, perhaps the museum, the art museum, whereby some of the art pieces can be uh, half a million each, that will be a lot of losses. So to summarize, S1, S2, S3, S4. So if you were to walk on the streets, on the clear sky, not so bad. But if you were to walk across the street, when there's lightning, there's a chance of being struck indirectly by the lightning. So for this, in this instance, right, S1, lightning flash from the top left -hand corner, struck the building and it traveled all the way down due to the, atom, uh, the copper tape. And when the human were to, to walk across, there's a chance of having uh, electrocuted by what we call step and touch voltage or step step uh, touch voltage. So which means that my left foot and my right foot will be on a different potential. That will mean current travel through my heart and I can get electrocuted. In Singapore, we had cases as such. In the past, we have cases at the bus stop, which is why nowadays for the bus stop, you do, do, you do see that uh, there's a wire mesh to ensure the big wire mesh dug up around and buried around this um, bus stop to ensure equi potential. So if there's a lightning strike, the potential will be unstable. It will be same potential rise up and rise down. So there will be an electrocution due to lightning. Okay, so definitely we need protection for lightning. And then part six will give us some um, uh, jargons for the calculation. R1, R2, R3, and R4. R1 is the no-no. So in the risk assessment, in the part two itself, R1 must be mitigated. If R1 is not being mitigated, it means that the structure is under design for lightning protection. Okay. So this is what I mean by the total risk calculated must be lower than the RT. RT is not a total, but tolerable level. So for instance, if the building is supposed to be designed for designed for like lightning level protection one, and my risk level is a lot higher than that, then, then I need to look, look into enhanced protection. 
So economic loss is subjective, so we won't cover because I can never calculate what is valuable to others. I can only calculate what is valuable to me. So this will be the cost, which Singapore wise, we hardly use this currently because we can't really justify what are the actual costs, intangible and tangible. We have to protect against thermal touch. So some of the basic method will be insulation, equal potential, physical restriction, and notices. Don't go out. So like our folks always tell us, when it rains, don't plug in your electronic devices to the power plug, and don't use the bathroom in case it, in case the structure got striked, and then we get uh, the lightning travel through the water pipes into our body. Ah. So protection measures will reduce the physical damage. Yes, so uh, I think start walking around and take a look at all the structure you'll find and terminals all around Singapore. And if needed, install um, SPD, search protective uh, devices, to reduce the effect or to stop the search from traveling through. So part two itself, SS55 part two, or say the standard part two, whether it's IEC or SS55, is critical to do that calculation. Because some location or some structure do need higher level or do have very high risk and definitely would end up with um, the requirement of the learning protection level one, not the four, but one. But generally in Singapore, our learning protection level minimum three. So we can say that we have very, uh, we have minimum protection already. Okay, we have the basic level protection. I'll say you know basic level protection. So another jargons uh, later. This is what you will see in the part four sharing. It's the LPZ zero A and zero B and lightning protection zone. as an LPZ one, LPZ two. So look into this small little house, small house, uh, and imagine there's a large sphere. We call this a rolling sphere effect. Rolling sphere. Okay. Rolling sphere. And if the rolling sphere can come in contact with the building, with the building itself, the structure, any point that it is not in contact with, as in look into the uh, the, the middle triangle, LPZ0B. Ah, this is the part whereby no direct flash, no direct flash. Okay, no direct flash. Means that if you stand at this corner, you won't get direct struck by lightning. And that is what uh, standard claims. So far, even though I have not heard anyone who stand next to the building and got struck, but we are still in the open. LPZ0A is direct flash. You have a risk of direct if you are everywhere outside uh, the, the contact area. So level one is where we are inside the building with a protection, with a protection. If there's no protection, then it's still considered direct. There's a chance of direct. When I say a protection, it's not because there's a wall, but then let's say lightning strike the building and then the roof material collapse and you get hit. So it's as good as you're still within the, the direct effect. You don't just get direct strike, but then you still get direct injury. Okay, now moving on to the next. So uh, a while ago, we were looking. We were looking at the big sphere, right? Big sphere. Now, how big is the sphere? If let's say we talk about lightning level protection one, which is the highest level, this rolling sphere itself should be about twenty meter radius, smaller ball. But if it's level three, is forty five meter radius. So what does this tell us? So the bigger the ball, the bigger the ball is like the lower the lightning protection level. So it makes sense. And in corresponding to lightning protection level one, we're talking about 200K maximum protection. And lightning protection level three, we are talking about only 100K. It's like half of it. So we can say that we have assumed, if we are using lightning protection level three, we have assumed that most of the time, the largest strength of lightning that's going to come down is only 100k and not the 200k by the guidance of the IEC standards. So let's look into this. At 45 meter, I like to everybody to remember this lightning level protection 45 meter. This is a very interesting. If I say we were to judge every level, Singapore for our uh, structure, every level is 3 meter. 45 divided by 3 
let's say for standard HDB housing or residential condominium, it could 45 divided by three, we will get uh, 15, which means that beneath 15 level, beneath 15 level, we are within the LPZ0B. And that's the, that is a zone, that means within 15 level, that is a zone whereby you feel that isn't a threat for lightning to strike you. But when you're at 15 level, open the window, you will know how close you are to the clouds. And you you, you ask yourself whether um, uh, uh, the clouds can come near enough or whether there's a chance for lightning strike or not. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. So part eight is to summarize that if you want to protect against lightning, we need external protection, air terminal, down conductor, and then early system. Then once we have all these system in, 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 in place, we will need internal lightning protection because since we have like uh, the air terminal guiding the guiding the, the lightning energy to the earth, there could be a chance of splashing into the building. So we definitely need to use S, uh, SPM, such protective me um, method as in common bonding or equipotential bonding or even such protective devices. So with that itself, this part one definition would have ended. So this part is very, very dry on to why we need and the definition on the protection. So the next part could be very interesting already because it's about search that's coming into uh, the industrial installation. Okay, I will switch over to another slide now. So if you have any question, you can dr drop me a message onto the chat box. Okay, now I'll do the sharing for the, the next part. So this is part four. Within the structure and for, for the electronic system and electrical system. So it's very much such a raster. Some call it search raster, some call it uh, search protective devices. IC will call it SPD, search protective devices, SPD. And then some countries will call it search raster or search suppressor. So there are different names for it. So these are the famous, some of these pictures that you see captured in Singapore. You can find, find this on the internet and on Facebook. Yes, I like what, uh, looking at all these pictures. But did you realize that um, it is not only tall buildings, or, uh, or as far as the tall buildings, we will attract more and more lightning because the tall buildings, our tall, tall buildings, we have air terminals. So to think though that Singapore will have more and more lightning activity increasing. So famous feature, yes, I like the one at MBS Marina Bay Sand, and there's one we strike right on top of the Mer Lion. Ah, uh, that that year. Uh, Marina Bay Sand hasn't been built yet. I kind of like that. It was in year 2009. And when we think that lightning will strike only tall buildings or a coastal area, look at this. Look at this. It's like you see, this is a jogging path, nothing around it, but it got struck. And then the tree itself got burned up, got struck and got burned up. Yes. And where else next? It can strike almost everywhere. So look into some of this picture that I, I, I have archived. I can see the mini explosion on the IC itself. For those who are working in the electronic mine, you get to, uh, I think you get to recognize this. This like the metal interconnect on the IC. And under uh, scanning electron microscopy, we can get to see the explosion. Yes, it's just a small explosion uh, from, you can call it electrostatic charges or even search wave itself. That's what happened. So that's this little punch itself will not kill the IC immediately. So for instance, our phone. After a while, you find that the phone stop functioning as fast as you want. It's not just for memory issue, it's just for software issue, but sometimes it's due to the IC. Just get hotter and hotter. Because with this punch itself, yes, our IC still operate, but then it just get hotter and hotter until it's no longer optimal to run fast enough. So the same 200K 
the less remember this 200k and also on the chart on the table 200k just remember as much as we protect against 99.99% of, of all the lightning I think we are good enough so 200k is still our reference okay a transient search so a while ago we were saying that lightning 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 but besides lightning we can also get this kind of transient search from a switching so let's say a nearby power station that's a switching of load we get to see this kind of search you know search for this spike and this would spike could puncture the insulation in the ic and causing damage to it so switching search and temporary over voltage so this is how the waveform will look like ah. so the same thing again where is right so if the bluish is struck by s1 let's say by s1 direct flash, direct flash we will get two effects the first effect is the energy lightning current will travel into the building so things will explode boom but when you travel further enough the energy gets weaker so we get we induce such voltage wave voltage search wave itself and it's the voltage wave that electronic will not be able to take it because it's, it overcome is dielectric but all these four effects are essentially damaging the electronics so we have to protect against it so arcing phenomenon just let me like, like to bring you to the arcing so what about switching on and off of switch are we going to create um such footage uh unlikely unless the load itself is in uh capacitive high capacity load itself R rlc if not we are not going to create very high search or let's say a spike itself so if you were to do normal switching right you get to see that you only like rise slightly above slightly above the search wave is slightly above like 10 10 percent above our normal uh rate of voltage so i test it myself yes i have to switch very fast very hard with high load before i can get a higher uh, search peak so it's about high loads switching then we get to, we get to see uh, a search voltage so equipment as such this uh the reason why we have searches okay but then when your neighbors or let's say next next building they are doing some switching you will never know because they will never tell you so what is the function of spd spd is to help to divert the search energy to the mouth Ching. so your equipment will be running especially your pc will be running fine and safe Centralization of the search itself you know we have mentioned about lightning coming down direct direct strike itself is characterized by 10 or 350 search wave 10 microseconds rise down 350 microseconds to drop to to decay to 50 percent half the half the time okay half its life a search wave of class two a search of class two will be in orbit 20. okay notice that uh beside class two itself uh sometimes we interchangeably use class one or type one or type b or class b so just take note this and then for the type two waveform it can be class two class c or type two okay so if you put them together right if you put them together right it oblique 20 microseconds the class two and class one together right area under the graph will be the search energy itself and if you were to just use mathematical right Class one search wave is about 20 times bigger of class two. So it's bigger. Of. So does it mean that when once I block the search wave of class one, I will have no other effect. I just block the ones. No. When we block class one search wave, there could still be a chance of class two search wave leak through. So we need a, a combination protection system. So look into what the SPD is doing. Let's look into what, what SPD is saying. So we have a SPD, search protective devices, and we have an end of life disconnector, as in a circuit breaker, which can withstand 25K. Let's look into this case. But there is a search running through and being diverted to the earth by the search raster. What happened? This search raster itself, if it can clear the search wave, as in drain it down to earth, fine. But what if it fail? As in, like, what if during then, during that, that instant itself, the duration increases and became a fault? 
So coordination from L1 draining to Earth become Earth fault. That's where you get the Earth short circuit itself. And we definitely need the circuit breaker to be at least 35K. So this is in relation to the circuit breaker selection, which we'll cover later on. So there are two definitions here, which is the follow current, uh, uh, short circuit follow current, and also I short circuit current is ISC, and follow current, uh, follow on short circuit current will be IFI. So no matter what, we it's best it's best to have an analog disconnector, which we'll show you in the definition later, to cut off the SPD. So it is always designed in a pair. Oh, still the same, 200K. Now, why we keep the 200K? Are we going to install a 200K search resistor? No. Let's look into what the IEC has guided us. So IEC will tell us that, oh, IV equals I, I divided by M. Oh, what does it mean? M is a number of conductor. So if I have a 200K, if I divide by number of conductor, hey, I have, I, I could divide more and I will have lesser risk, uh, lesser energy going through one conductor. Let's look into what I mean. Cool. But basically, look into this diagram. If a 200K would strike a building, lightning would strike a building, traveling down to the, to the earth, through the earth cable, down into the earth itself, now, it can be assumed that 50K, 50% uh, of the energy will go into the building. And 50% will go into the dissipated. And that 50% will be 100K running through home, home electrical system and uh, divided or spread out through the four cables, three phase, four cable. So 100 divided by four will be a 25K. So that's why in a lot of uh, such arrestors that you find in the market, you do find only 25K. Ah, 25K. And not more than that. But doesn't mean no one will design one like that. Yes, ABB has 100K, 160K, 200K, 400K. Those are for exception use and exception design, which is exclude, excluded outside, a very fundamental design. So the more conductor we have for a building, the more energy is spread out, get shared. So that's why our building usually has lesser effect from the lightning, lightning strike itself. Ah, that's the reason because we still have our water pipes, metal conduits. So this is the picture exactly as the pictures from the IC. It's a very boring drawing. That's why I have to make into a color one in the previous one. So gas pipe, metal, conduit, all contributes, all contribute to the traveling path and sh sharing get to the main lightning energy cell will get to be shared among them. So with that itself, we are quite safe. Um, so look into the LPZ0 again. Zero will be right outside, but it's not protected. One will be after there's a search resident, and then we'll get into LPZ1. If we install another another la layer of search resident, we'll go into the safer zone, LPZ2. So the more layer of search resident, the more the, the safer the equipment is behind the, the next level. So LPZ2 is one of the safest. So this is the IZ representation. So we get to see the LPZ 0A and 0B outside the building of the structure. And once we enter the structure with the search raster SPD, it becomes LPZ1 and LPZ2 after the next search raster. So let's see that. Again. And no matter what, we need coordinate protection. Let's look into why we need coordinate protection. One search raster to block search uh, class one waveform and class two search raster to block the class two search wave. So given that there's a 200 k lightning and if it passes through without search raster, everything will be damaged. If you have a one single SPD blocking class one, yes, it's good. But unfortunately, most of the time, we can't find one single SPD that could do all the jobs. So which is why it's easier, it's easier to do a coordinate protection. Anywhere. We only use a small search register and a small search wave. Yes. 
But for a larger search wave with a small SPD, you're going to see some equipment being damaged. So we need coordinate protection. So why we need coordinate protection? Let's look into equipment category. In the past, right, all laptops or home equipment appliances will have this equipment category that is defined under 60364. So most of the household appliances are under category 1, 1.5 kV, we stand 1.5 kV. But look into a lot of uh, lab, uh, I'll say tablets, they are not able to handle 1.5 kV. Perhaps 600 volts is the maximum they can take. That's why when we, our, uh, when we, our, our PC lasts slightly longer than our mobile phone and tablets. Yeah. And for other equipments, it could be 2 5 4 kV, 6. So there's a lot of question about whether we need to put a search register, use a search register to protect a circuit breaker. The answer is no, because the circuit breaker, even the smallest one miniature circuit breaker, is at least 4 kV. So we don't need to protect uh, um, a circuit breaker, but we need to protect our electronic devices. Okay, so a coordinated SPD. Nice. And we can find this in the market. Or oh, safe. So we're going to use three classes, class one, two, three. But doesn't mean that now in the market there isn't what you call hybrid. Now in the market there is such thing called hybrid. And we have class one plus two, or class two plus three, or class one plus two plus three protection. One single search register that cover all. But that is uh, on the high, price is on the high side. But it's a good search register. So now, if we were not going to do that, we could actually define what kind of search register we're going to put at class one level or LPZ zero. And then what we're going to install at LPZ one to ensure the next level will be the, the zone will be safer, LPZ2. So these are the recommendations, how we should put. So at the very beginning, we will put a type 1 search register that's protecting and blocking search for 10 of 350. And the next level will be type 2 or class 2, blocking search wave of 8 of 20 microseconds. Yeah. So this is one by coordinated protections. And it's, in fact, it's, it's, it's fine. We can have a good search register, class one, but it's never going to block all the search wave. Some search wave will go to the next level. So usually we call it the 90%, 90-10 rule. So assuming that 10% will go to the next level and 10% will go to the next level. So this is the reason why that's required for coordinated protection as well. And these are IEC calls for that. Why and how? But all these testing are usually done and conducted by the manufacturer. Um, most of the laboratory won't conduct for you, so that, which is why only manufacturer with their own laboratory we will get to test this out. So ABB happens to be one of them. If I, ABB, oh, uh, under ABB we have five brands. Not, not, I'm not sure whether you get to know of it. First is under ABB. Soleil from France is under ABB. America we have two brands. Uh, current current technology as such, Jocelyn. And one more brand from Halita, another brand from front, uh, Europe also, Halita is also under ABB. So we have quite a few search register branding under ABB, just uh, for different region. So let's get into another problem. This is the, this, what you see now on the screen is a typical schematic that is on the IEC as well as the CP5, or now known as SS638. Why I want to mention is because this schematic is seen everywhere. But this is what we call the common mode schematic. Common mode schematic will mean there's a search raster protecting L1 to Earth, L2 to Earth, L3 to Earth, and neutral to Earth. But it's not come, it is not quite adequate. Let me just show you why it's not quite adequate. If there's a search between L1 in L1, we can show you drain it fine. So we climb it to like 1,200 volts. So the equipment is safe. But if there is a search running through neutral, you're going to see that our neutral search raster is going to clamp to 1002. But you know, equipment could be drawing L1 and N to our single phase, as a single phase distribution. And that means it ended up like overall, we're going to see a 2.4 kV. 
which is not good for our equipment. So some of these customers have seen that when even when they install such raster, they still see equipment burn. And when we actually explore for them, investigate for them, we realize that they install this common word. One such raster for one single line. So what what is the next way to protect? Let's do to the next one. This is the correct way and we call it differential mode. And in IEC, this is recognized as seven mode protection. So it means that between L1 to neutral, one level connection, L2 neutral, another protection, L3 to neutral, another protection. So, so all in all, you get to see seven such raster within this schematic, and this is correct. So no matter where the search comes from, it's still going to clamp to just 1.2 kV and the equipment is safe. And to share with you, there's a new there's a new schematic that is useful. This is a new schematic. You may see that hey, this looks very much like the uh, common mode, but look into the effect because the spark gap that is at the bottom. Ah. When there's a surge within L1, show it drain out by the L1 search raster. And for the new for for this spark gap itself, no matter what, it would be conductive. It has to be conductive, as well as L1 has something to conduct. The L2, you also have a drain, so which is why the maximum you get out of this class schematic is 1.4 kV, still 1.4. Okay. Because as long as you want to drain the energy, such energy from L1 to Earth, the spark gap will be activated. Once activated, the maximum voltage itself that you can see is just 1.4. So this is a new schematic to be a similar to the differential mode or the seven mode. So this is a new type of design of a seven mode. So we have covered quite a lot on search raster technology. Now there's one problem with search raster. Now if you were to go into search raster te uh, technology itself, right? There is such such thing called barista or metal oxide barista. Type one. I'll say not type one. One type of search raster. And another type will be the spark gap. Spark gap will be like electrodes, uh, two pointy electrodes, very small electrodes. And when you have excessive high voltage, then that's where the electrodes will get conducted through the air. A third type will be silicon diode, silicon avalanche diode. Now, if you ask me which one is best, uh, I can't say which one is the best because uh, I'll I will share with you later on in a while. So spark gap, we can recycle and reuse and reuse and reuse. But its um its protection voltage itself is rather high. So which is why uh it is only used is mainly designed for class one class one search. But for class two search, the best device is still metal oxide barista. It's like a powder. But this powder, which is the barista, will slowly break down across time or when there's a stress to it. We call this normal aging. Normal aging. And this aging usually takes place like after three years to five years. It can be due to heat activation or it can be due to like several heat by the searches itself. And when these get heat, get heat, what happened? Or let's say slowly die off, such raster will just open circuit. But there could be a chance that this varista go into a short circuit. Short circuit. And most manufacturers will say that if it goes to short circuit, please install, please install a fuse or circuit breaker if above or before or upstream of the search raster. No choice, we have to do it. So when I say we need to, in fact, it's not just about one manufacturer recommendation. The IEC did recommend that for every single search raster, please install a fuse upstream. So in case a uh, SPD short circuited, at least it will not affect the main board. Okay. So SPD, there are a few constructions. Some are able to break because it's, it has a big short circuit uh, circuit breaker. It can break the contact if there's a short circuit. So we call this IFI, follow current interrupting current. But those that do not have a built-in circuit breaker, we call them short circuit current rating. So they must be in pair with a circuit breaker that must be recommended by the manufacturer. This is also in acceptance by the manufacturer. So the manufacturer has to do a lot of studies just to come up with the recommendation. So let me just show you this version. The recommendation is always on the catalog. 
after the first incoming breaker. But in between, we will need to have this switching element or end of line disconnected circuit breaker. In between, must have this. So this is the way to install the circuit arrestor. And must always be after the first incoming circuit breaker. Cannot be above it. And like I mentioned, right, we do not protect for do protection for a circuit breaker. The circuit breaker can resist it. And most country adopted SPD installed after the first income. There's one problem with um, search with. You know, every meter of cable itself, it could potentially induce another thousand volts. This is also in the center. So now, if look into this itself, look into this is an oscillation, we call it oscillation phenomenon. If um, the search raster is nearby the equipment. Yes, always nearby the equipment. We can block the search wave. But if if the equipment is so far away from the search raster, is the search raster going to still able to protect? No, because the search wave it travels, it pass, it pass through the search raster. But at the end of the day, it will grow bigger and bigger because of the inductance effect, and it will still heat your equipment. So anything by the guidance of IEC. Anything, any load that is more than 10 meter apart, you need another SPD. You need another SPD. If it's less than 10 meter, you do not need additional. But most of the most of the time, right, um, for electrical panel design, we will take care of the incoming. Outgoing side, end user must consider whether their equipment uh, needs protection or not. So which is why uh, uh, there are companies who sell UPSs, the mini UPSs for the desktop, because some of the equipment are really very important, must not be down. Now, what we mentioned about the every meter of cable will generate a lot of um, uh, additional search voltage, right? Okay, so which is why you look at this installation, all the cables are kept as short as possible. Yes, so let's study this in our DB. Okay, the coupling point, and look at the overall wiring. And then from SPD of to the earthing point, 65, let's look into how much we're going to generate. Overall, we collected one meter, which means we're going to see additional one, additional 1,000 volts. So all, all in all, all in all, my video, all in all, my voltage, is voltage will be a 2850. So my video comms or sound of the computer will go on fast. So we have to keep the line as short as possible, which is why in the DB itself, it's good to use combat bar, combat bar as well, combat bar, because combat bar is very short distance and instead of long distance. So let's look to short distance. Passium, passium, passium. So overall, I'm going to get a little more. All in all, 1,500 volts and my equipment still safe. So this is a summary to what we proposed. In, let's say for uh, most of the MSB, inside MSB would have a class one such raster. And inside a sub board, right, sub DB will be a class two. And what about our residential home? Residential home could be a class two and two class three such raster. But if you do know that your building doesn't have class one, it's best you install class one plus two plus three all in all together. So for instance, some of these uh, landed property, whereby they're incoming, they won't know whether incoming has class one or not. So it's best they install class one plus two plus three. If not, most of the equipment could fail. So these are some of the jargons. But let's say into one important part, earning. So we talk about all the installation, cabling, but then for Earth itself, you must follow this guidance. According to the SF45 part 42010, which is outdated already. Yeah, the newer one should be 2018. The garden should be for class one, six mm square. 
class two four mm square. So I think in the market, most will use four mm two and a half mm square and four mm square for lightning for for equipotential bonding. So that's very important. So do take note of this bonding a bonding cable and the size itself. If we use a thin cable, what is the effect? The effect is that because thinner cable means the higher ohmic or higher resistance. So the search wave is not able to travel out and will mean that the search wave will not want to choose this simple, simplest path. They want to actually revert back to the main circuitry again and then you will hurt other electronic devices. So do take note that we have to observe this table as well, bonding cable size. So I'm going to show you one of these uh, uh, search generator that AVB has, and then look into the search count. I'm going to flash it. You can see that the counter went from five to six. Okay, let me do it again. Okay, so we have a search generator here that can generate one KB search wave. And look into this installation with, um, and the light bulb itself, with, with a search raster, the bulb will not fail, will not be killed. Okay, let us generate the search wave. Okay, that's a flash, but arrested by the search raster. So the bulb is still working. You can find these uh, videos right on the YouTube, on the YouTube. So let's listen to the next one. So we bought search raster. One search raster is taken out, the live one. When you generate, I can hear a very sharp sound. Yes. So the bulb is gone. The bulb is really gone. So let me play again. Ah, yes. It's really one. Yeah. So selection of selection of the SPD at least twenty five k. At least 25k. But for home itself, you could look into 3k to 5k. But most of the time, you only get to uh, protect you once. That's all. Protect you once only. So it's good to have a pluggable version, pluggable version whereby if the cartridge, um, the search raster has gone end of life, you could just pull, pull it out and buy a new one and replace, just like in cartridge. So it's always good for, let's like, say, re to get a replacement cartridge version. So you can see that the indicator will tell you whether it's red. Red color means end, end of it. So green is still in service. So how do we start with? So we definitely need to protect the building. But the building part will be by the building owner or the building designer. But for the second part will be the class two. Let's go into the class two. And class one itself, one thing we need to bring across is like, uh, cam voltage must be less than 2.5 kV. So you cam one round. Now for class 2, which is used in a lot of machines, you need to be class 2 with form. At least 25 kV. So why I mentioned 40 k is because most of the pro uh, manufacturing in the market offers 40 k most. And you must be less than 1.5 because our Equipment itself is one rated 1.5, so it's best to be the clamp voltage or voltage protection is best to be less than 1.5 kV. So in this case, I put 1.4. So before it, we need to ensure we have a fuse in case SPD goes short circuit. So we need to install that. And that itself must come, that recommendation must come from the manufacturer and what we call end of life disconnector. So, but there are many other surges coming from, let's say, um, CCTV, the RJ45 of the LAN cable. That is how there will, uh, we call it data line protection, have dedicated method of protection that is needed. I've seen quite a number of cases whereby 
um, in Singapore, quite a lot of cases whereby in Singapore that some of the CCTV fail and fail to capture important images. Or even let's say security system fail, and what happens is like certain security, some side right, security system itself is failing safe, means open the gantry. Some site, some installation, and some building is fail safe, lock the building. So example like for prison, fail safe, lock the building. You can't be open the build, open up all the gates. So but for hospital or healthcare zone, folks home, fail safe, open all the gate. So we have different ways of doing it, but of course, we wouldn't want to have a fail safe condition to activate and then uh, causing more problems. Why I say fail safe is a problematic as a nuisance. Yeah, imagine um, you're working into a, in a secure building and fail safe, lock up the building and no one can walk out the building just because the electronic system has failed. But, and then for healthcare, fail safe, open all the gates and then you can have trespasser coming in. So that is undesired also. So with this itself, I have uh, completed search register, part one and part two, uh, part one and part four. So for part three and part two, part two and part three, uh, we will conduct again uh, in the next round sometime like in April. Hope to see you. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, right, you may drop me an email or you can drop on the chat box. I'd like to share with you where is it, my mailbox. Let me share with you my business card. Or you can send to Paul. Either myself or send to Paul. So you're getting that now? Okay. This one. So once you're done, I think it's time to say good night and I'll close the session. I'll look in the chat box to see anybody lacking any questions. There are a few questions. Yes, how about the selection type? Okay, in fact, uh, hi, Terry. In fact, for selection itself, uh, APP always like to share IEC guidance, and then from IEC guidance, we will look into how Singapore site should design it. So selection of type, uh, main board definitely must be class one, then sub board must be class two. Uh, of course, we can do a class one plus three plus two in some of these very important location. Uh, I like to mention like example, for example, the ports area, but that class one, two, three must be there. Class one, two, three must be together. Because in case someone would stay on in the port area without shelter, lightning could strike, that's one. The next thing is that any electrical, any metallic installation could also flash over to him. And if any any of the structure, let's say a training shed, sound equipment may get hit. So that's important. Okay, with that itself, thank you everybody. Thank you. And Within the handout itself, right, I have a PDF, the slides you may download, okay? And I have also a, a video which you can download uh, on five lightning facts for Singapore. This is five lightning facts for Singapore. And interestingly, CNA has uh, even interviewed the PE, the structural PE, as well as the lightning protection PE, and as well as those uh, the survivor who has been struck by lightning before. Yes, it can be painful, uh, but it's, uh, I, I don't know how many people actually walk out of hospital. In fact, hospital has uh, has uh, given a statistics that every year there are at least a few people got struck by lightning in Singapore. Maybe they did not listen to our folks. Maybe they don't know our folks in the sense that when you rain, don't go out to play. Okay, don't play outdoor and stay indoor. So which is why I think gaming is quite uh, interesting. I'll, I'll stay indoor and watch TV and do gaming. Thank you, everybody. I'll close this today. And do drop me a mail if you have more. Good night.